I, like most of my videos, I'm trying to do practical things. I'm using at work, things that will save me time and money, how to make AI allow me to be more productive. Now, this is using a tool that's I think called Stagehand, but they're wrapping it with this nice UI. And in the end, it's all about playwright using that to then automate web stuff. Now we saw OpenAI release their version of it called Operator, but how to use it, when to use it. In this case, I'm using it for QAing websites. In the past, I used to write Gherkin and all that weird stuff, and it was maybe it would work, maybe it would not. It was a lot of work to write. Some people will write Dusk. I'm saying we don't have to write anything anymore. We just make a prompt. Now I'm running this on my machine, I'm running it in Docker, so it could run on a server somewhere, it could be triggered that way. In the end, this web UI is just that. It's a UI around a code base, so we can easily write the code and just write the prompt and be done. And without all the gherking and all the cucumber and all that stuff. Now, when it runs, it's going to make some results like this in a video and we'll show it working. And part of this process is I have it on success or fail hit a URL that is basically an 8N webhook, which you could use anything, active pieces, whatever, that when it hits there, it just puts it in a database pass or fail, okay? So when I run this, we're going to hit this test website I made, log in, see it pass, and then hit this te test website again, and they'll do a no username and password, they get a validation error, and then it passes again. So now I'll never have to really test this. I could run this from GitHub Actions and just do it. Now, this UI is really good, but it's also a little bit confusing. But I've had it run really well on my Mac. I'm running in Docker right now, so it's not always as seamless. But I decided to use Docker for a number of reasons. But here we can watch it through VNC because it actually has VNC running, which is a, it's been around since 1970, and it's a virtual network computer to then see what's going on the computer inside or in Docker. Pretty cool stuff. Now, this can go a lot further. It could do research for you, and there's a tab for that. And it could do LinkedIn, go in there, log in, and get data that you can't get easily out of those places. You could do deep research with it. Go research these particular items, buy me a computer, or build me a computer on new egg and put it together and then put it in the car, like whatever. I have used it once or twice to do shopping for food, puts everything in the cart, I go in and click buy. I review it first, of course. I think I had to return something from Amazon because about five of them, but anyways. There we see it done. Now if we go back to this guy and I'm gonna reload it, I don't know if I can, dine. oh yeah, I can just click this. There we go, we have fast. Now if we had a fail, we could have this trigger an event somewhere else or the webhook action come in and trigger an event somewhere else. So we could do stuff with this and we could trigger this from GitHub Actions because in the end it is just code like Python. It is Python. And you can run this in GitHub Actions. So you're set to go. You don't need the browser on GitHub. That's pretty cool. And all the prompt is just me saying, go here, do this. Sure, I put a username and password in there, but you can use environment variables. I just don't care because I'm going to remove this site. That was site was just an example site from bolt.new. Bolt but now I could just go down this list. I could set up a few of these to do different things. You could see the results here if you want. The things are good here. It's always a little quirky. The web UI is amazing. It's just, this stuff's hard to make complex web UIs. You could do deep research. You could see past recordings and so on. Even to the point where you could use your own browser. I don't know how you would do that in Docker, but, and then save some sessions and keep going at it. It's pretty cool. I got a Mac mini over there that I could run this stuff on. It wouldn't interrupt my work while it runs, and then I could go take over when I need to. So you can see how having some space to keep these things running, long-term tasks, could be really productive. But all right, so this, I just want to share this amazing technology and hopefully get you thinking on the other stuff you can do with it. And it's not that hard. Read the docs, get Docker set up, consider deploying it later on. There's so many videos on how to do this, how to set it up. I'll try to link to a few at the bottom that I've really liked. And then, yeah, just put the pieces together and help use this AI stuff to automate or assist you in not doing the grunt work anymore that we do day after day. You can learn more about these ideas and how to bring these concepts to your day-to-day. -day. Sign up for the course. If you want, there's a sign up for the newsletter somewhere on here. It should have been. 
but you could just sign up for the newsletter as well. And that's just sign up studio, And then that will keep you up to date. I do write, it takes me two or three weeks to write a newsletter, but there is this website here that if you go to alfrednutility.info, I'm constantly putting the videos on YouTube that are inspiring me to try something. I put them here, link right to them. And so you can get to these videos that I'm watching every day to just kind of get a sense of what's going on out there. All right. Thank you. Hope this pays off.